Many people have heard of the Gunnison River that flows through the Black Canyon and the Gunnison Gorge. But not everyone has heard the story of the rainbow trout that inhabit these waters. The story of how these fish were nearly wiped out by whirling disease, but now, after 25 years, are on their way back. It was not a trout fishery in the first half of the 20th century, even up until the mid-1970s. But by 1981, it was very clear that the, this trout fishery had grown to be a really fantastic stream because of the fact that it's pretty much ideal water temperatures on a year-round basis. The salmon fly population began to blossom. By 1988, we had, in that two-mile reach, 10,000 browns over six inches long and 10,000 rainbows over six inches long. Things went along really, really well from 1982 up until uh, the week before the 4th of July of 1993. Crystal River was being stocked with 1,000 to 2,000 fish from Roaring Judy. That was a year when Blue Mesa, Mara Point, and Crystal were all spilling, and it turned out those rainbows from the Roaring Judy hatchery that were infected went right down through Crystal Dam, went into the spill basin. When I came down to the stream in August, I walked up and a little rainbow saw me coming and it started whipping itself in a boomerang fashion and it just swept itself right up onto a little bank. And I just about sat down and cried because I had taught my sons how to fly fish for quality sized rainbow and brown trout in this stream. In the fall of 1993, we were electrofishing and the small baby rainbow and brown trout where we were doing a study on, the fishery was 65% uh, rainbow fry and 35% brown. We came back in the late October. It was like the rainbow fry had been vacuumed out of the stream. We were able to find three or four fish and two of them tested positive for the parasite. But at that time, nobody believed that whirling disease had any effect whatsoever. By the year 2003, the rainbow population had dropped down to 86 fish from a high of 10,000 a decade or so earlier. When I first started fishing this river, you catch lots of rainbows, big rainbows. But then whirling disease came along. It really changed that and the rainbows pretty much went away. Such devastation is hard to imagine. What kind of disease can cause a 99% decline in a rainbow trout population over such a short period of time? Whirling disease is a uh, disease of salmonids, which has a two-host life cycle, trout, and the tubifex tubifex worm is the secondary host. The main symptoms of whirling disease are skeletal deformities. It's called whirling disease because they do get a whirling motion that they often can't get out of. It exhausts the fish, makes it so they can't swim and feed correctly. And then they also get this condition known as blacktail, which is where the back quarter of the fish turns black. And these deformities cause the fish to not be able to live generally past their first year of life. Well, the worm that lives in streams like the Gunnison, hundreds of thousands of them, and those worms produce a blizzard of floating spores that are like grappling hooks. Uh, that float in the water, but on contact with the fish, they fire through the epidermal tissues and migrate through the nerve bundles. What happens with this parasite, it consumes the cartilage that's the template for bone formation. And so the fish is gonna be missing parts of its skeleton. Despite the devastating impacts of whirling disease, these fish have started to make a strong comeback. And we thought it was time to show the world Riding down here for 14 years. Get him. 
Yeah. Barely ever saw any bows uh, after the whirling disease decimated them. You know, in the spring when we do our early trips, maybe you'd see one, two rainbows on uh, reds where you should see a lot more. Nowadays, you're seeing hundreds. It's, uh, it's a special fish to catch for sure. Fight like hell too. Hit him. Let him run, baby, big bow. Got him, got him. The answer to how they have been able to overcome such a deadly disease is a little less obvious. Is there something unique about the location, these particular fish, or the people involved? A lot of times right below a dam, you have lower infection rates. And so I think that this might have just sort of been right in the sweet spot as far as enough of the parasite out there to infect the population, but not so heavy that it just wiped everything out. We were actually able to maintain some rainbow survival in this part of the river. And we were spawning the fish here, taking their eggs into a hatchery, raising them up to about six or eight inches where they were uh, less susceptible to mortality from whirling disease. They would still carry the parasite and they would still propagate the disease, um, but it wouldn't necessarily kill them. Put them back in the river and then let them grow. It was just a, an artificial way to maintain um, some level of rainbow trout in the river while they were adapting to the disease. The whirling disease resistant rainbow trout were developed from a Hofer strain, which comes from Germany, that developed resistance over about 100 years. Unfortunately, it's a domesticated fish, so when we brought it into Colorado, we wanted to make sure that we could cross it with our wild rainbow trout strains to make sure that we had a fish that was both resistant to whirling disease and could survive the conditions of Colorado. We now have what we call the Hofer by Gunnison River rainbow. Mother Nature, with the helping hand from mankind, has created a wild rainbow trout that is resistant to whirling disease. The eggs from these fish are now being raised in hatcheries to help rebuild rainbow trout populations in the Gunnison and throughout Colorado. The results from this research has the potential to positively impact other trout fisheries around the world that are also feeling the consequences of whirling disease. I mean, this river is truly something special. I mean, people come from all over the world to fish the Gunnison River, and we're lucky enough to work on it. Um, but when you fish it, when you boat it, it really gets in your blood. And, and there, there's a million different things. Um, I will tell you as an angler, um, you'll never find fish that fight harder than the ones you catch out of this river, and especially the rainbow trout. You know, a lot of people question why they're so important and why we would go through this expense and this amount of labor to preserve those fish. Um, but they're a great sport fish. They're the kind of fish that once you catch them, you'll, you'll come back your entire life. It's important to see those rainbow trout here in a post-whirling disease era. We got to take care of this for the future also. It's great for me to come down here and enjoy this, all of us in the present day, but uh, it's going to be here a long, long time. This gorge hadn't changed for centuries and people will come and go. We've got to keep the future generations where they can have the same fun, same access, same experience.